the talking season has wrapped up, and the Big Ten Media Day certainly had a different feel with UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington participating for the first time. Now, the coaches and players interviewed during Big Ten Media Days acknowledged that this will probably be the toughest the league has ever been. In fact, Nebraska head coach Matt Rule even went so far as to say that the Big Ten Conference is the NFL of college football, which is a rather bold statement. The Big Ten media poll from Cleveland.com revealed, as things change, not all things remain the same. Ohio State is the overwhelming favorite to finish at the top, with Oregon second, making for an Ohio State-Oregon Big Ten championship game. Now, before I continue, I think with Oregon joining the Big Ten, we may see a budding rivalry between the Ducks and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State, old school Big Ten, gray fall days at the horseshoe, Woody Hayes and three yards in a cloud of dust. Oregon, a 21st century powerhouse, West Coast cool, marketable uniforms. Hey, it's all about selling the merchandise. Phil Knight and his Nike marketing skills. I find this potential rivalry fascinating and only time will tell if it can equal or be on the same par with Ohio State, Michigan. We will find out October 12th when Ohio State travels to Eugene, Oregon to face the Ducks. The Buckeyes should be 5-0 heading to that showdown. Three weeks later, Ohio State must go to Penn State and history is on the side of the Buckeyes. They've won seven in a row over the Nittany Lions. Ohio State ends the season hosting Michigan. Oregon should be 5-0 before the Ohio State showdown, too, but Oregon's November will be tough, starting the month at Michigan, and then two weeks later at Wisconsin. The Ducks do catch a break hosting Washington in their rivalry game, and that's a rivalry game where anything could happen. The rest of the Big Ten preseason poll has Penn State at 3 and Michigan at number 4, and depending on where the chips fall, That foursome could be in the college football playoff. Iowa's number five, and hopefully the Hawkeyes will have an offense their fans can be excited about. Southern California debuts at number six in the Big Ten. Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Rutgers round out the first page. Washington leads the second page. New coach, Jed Fish. New quarterback, former Mississippi State QB, Will Rogers. New conference, the Big Ten. The Husky season is a crapshoot, though. Maryland, Minnesota, Illinois, Northwestern, UCLA, Michigan State. And what is happening with football in the state of Indiana? Both the Hoosiers and the Boilermakers are predicted to finish in the basement. So this season promises to be epic. One for the ages in the Big Ten. A lot of exciting games coming up, new rivalries. I can't wait for kickoff. How about you? With his unique take on the Big Ten... I throw it to John Nelson. Thank you, Wilkie. I know that with the B1G being the B1GGER, they're the bigger B1G, or I'm trying to figure out how to phrase it now. But you were looking at the rivalries up top. What I wanted to do was go to the other side. With all of the teams now in the B1G, who's really going to be at the bottom of all of this? Computer rankings, I think, have a lot of the, the 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 teams that are in the bottom half of the 18 team B1 G B1 double G E R B1 G. They're saying that they're going to go five and seven. You're going to have a lot of teams going five and seven. And now that you have nine gazillion teams in the B1G, you've got 18. But you get my point. No one's going to be worse than five and seven, according to computers. Indiana predicted to be last. 45% chance to qualify for a bowl game. Maybe at five and seven. Michigan State projected to win 4.8 games this year. And like I said, they're 17th. 16th is Illinois. They're predicted, along with Minnesota, to only win 5.3 games. So Michigan State maybe four and eight, and they say when it's like four point eight games. To me, that's four. But it looks like five and seven. I don't know if the computer is just afraid to to go ahead and pick a team that's four and eight as opposed to five and seven. 
Purdue at 14, 30% winning four and a half games. Northwestern, David Braun won eight games a year ago, only projected to win five and a half by some computers this year. So does that make you five and seven or six and six? Maryland, a new face at quarterback, 6.6 games projected by a computer. So I think that we finally might have hit our limit. Rutgers, eight starters return on defense, new quarterback, projected to win seven games. Nebraska, expected by computers to win six and a half. And Dylan Riola going to uh, Nebraska. UCLA, the bottom half of everything. Five and a half games. They lost a lot of production. They lose their coach. (laughs) Projected to win five and a half games. And favoring UCLA by 4.9 points against opponents. Wisconsin projected at six and a half. Iowa projected at seven wins. Maybe they'll score more points on average than wins projected this year. Washington projected by computers to only win 6.4. So they're projected at six and six. USC projected at seven wins by some computers. Michigan projected at eight. Penn State computers have them winning 10. And then to the whole point about Oregon and Ohio State one and two. But I don't know. You look at the bottom, and legitimately, I think computers are afraid to sit there and say, no, they'll be four and eight. So some teams by computers winning four, most of them winning five at the bottom half, some winning six. And 95 teams from the B1GER are going to bowl games. So that's my look. I went from the bottom up. I think you're going to have a lot of mediocrity in a B1GER conference in the Big Ten. So that's my rundown. I say that I anticipate being proven wrong by about 95% of the planet because usually when it comes to predictions, for me, take what I say, go 180 degrees because I am not good at predicting things. But when a computer says 4.8, to me that sounds like 4, and that the computer was afraid to say 4. So we'll see what happens at the bottom of the B1GER this year with an 18-team conference and 95 of their teams going to bowl games. That's our quick look at the B1GER. For Wilkie, I'm John. Thanks for dropping by. You can always follow us at OSG Sports on all of our social media and subscribe to all of our content podcasts coming up sooner than you think, where we will be discussing things on a weekly basis. We'll have the review. We'll have the X. A lot of stuff on display here at OSG Sports when it comes to college football. So for everybody here at OSG Sports, for Wilkie, I'm just John. Thanks for dropping by for another go-round as we take a peek at things in a new conference that is now supersized when it comes to college football in 2024.